Hey everyone, Jake Walkie from Walkie Farm tuning in. I've been gone for a while. I broke my phone, I broke my laptop, got logged out of everything, and I've just been too busy to worry about it. But I'm back today and I want to talk to you about how we are opening up our retail butchery with no staff. So out, we are renovating out the front of Wolke Farm at the moment and we've had to, out the Wolke Butchery rather, and we've had to rip up the slab and put a new slab in and get glaziers in and tilers and all sorts of stuff. And it's all coming along pretty quickly. We're thinking we're going to be open in approximately that eight week time frame. Uh, but the, the business model that we have had to adapt is quite different to, I think, what's been conventionally done. And the reason is, is that the overheads of a, tradition, of a traditional butchery will crush us. So the way a butchery would normally run, would they would ring up and just order boxed meat from a wholesaler or unknown carcasses. You know, they can't really trace the provenance, the farm of the product from the local abattoir. And it turns up for their dollar per kilo and they put it in the shelf and they sell it. Uh, with, with an operation like ours, selling our meat, in, in the retail sense and then offering that service to other local producers, the margins are a lot smaller. So if I ring up one of the local um, farmers that are doing grass fed and finished and selling their product direct to their consumer and say, hey, we'd like to put some of your product on my shelf, which we will be doing because Wolke Farm uh, does not generate enough, uh, does not generate enough produce to supply the amount of people that we have the ambition to supply. So we sell them enough to get by as a farm but if we want to really make an impact in the local food scene, we need to be selling a lot more than what we're selling. So we're not looking at operating in isolation. We're looking at operating in community. So we're contacting local producers and saying, we would love to have your product out the front because we know the way you farm. We know your principles. Uh, we know you. So come into this with us. The margin that we as the retailer are going to be achieving on that meat is around 20%. You know, most people are wanting to negotiate and first offerings is between that 15 to 25% range. Now, if we look at that model and let's say that if the business is open seven days a week and all my businesses are open seven days a week, let's say seven days a week, eight hours a day, uh, someone being paid, you know, you're probably going to need two staff to cover that. And that's probably going to be a gross spend of somewhere around $80,000 once you do um, wages, superannuation, workers comp, and then you've got to deal with the headaches of things like sick days or HR issues or occupational health and safety, all these ongoing concerns for 80 grand a year with a margin on your retail sales of 20%. What do your retail sales have to be just to cover wages? $400,000. That's a lot of meat, folks. And that's a lot of meat to push through a, a little place that's just starting off the way we're going to do it. And that doesn't cover any other overheads. That doesn't cover the cost of the fit out, the cost of running the fridges, um, you know, the rent, any, any of the other overheads that come into the business, let alone making a profit. So we are looking at a business that is going to have to do, if we're running it with staff, it's going to have to do 700 grand to cover costs and make a small profit, which is two grand a meter day, and trying to pull that amount of produce and move it like that is going to be a challenge for us. There's plenty of butcheries around that'd be doing one, two, three million dollars, but they're dealing with a lot of the time commodity products that they can buy in cheap and just push out. Like you walk into the butcheries in town, they got six, seven, eight staff on. They're not dealing with products that have 10, 15, 20% margin. So how are we going to get around it? Well, the reality is, is our product caters to a very, uh, a very um, willing, compliant, um, niche and attentive customer. Our, it is already hard to get our produce. If you want to buy our beef, like I want to make it easier, but it's hard. People have to go to either um, Almer Organics or Cafe Musette, two small retailers in town, or they have to message me on Instagram or Facebook or call me. You know, you can't just walk into your big box stores and load, throw it into your trolley. You've got to source it. And guess what? We're selling as much as we can produce, uh, basically. So... I don't think it has to be a convenience story necessarily. So the way we're setting this up is the, the butchery is going to be set with glass doored freezers. People can apply to become a, a, a customer, 
no cost, but they, they fill out a form on our website to apply to become a customer. Uh, we review it and take appropriate action, hopefully approving them. And then the customer gets one of uh, three options. They either go, get a, 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 an app on their phone with a login, uh, they get a PIN code or an RFID chip, and they can self-access into the butchery. So the butchery will be open for approved customers 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They can turn up and tap their phone, type their PIN, um, tap their card, and the card and the PIN is really there for people who maybe are not phone, liter uh, phone literate like our older customers. They can gain access into the building. We're building a system um, where the, the software that you're coming in with is basically gym software. So I can add, um, edit, and remove customers remotely off my laptop, software on my laptop through the cloud. Um, I could let people in remotely from an app on my phone. I can look at logs of people coming and going. When they walk in the building, there's going to be an airlock, which means there's a second door, and the second door will not open until the first door closes. This, to me, is solving the the concern that people have that maybe someone who's not a registered customer is going to follow them in and just grab an arm full of stuff and leave. So there's an airlock. So you, you walk in, little hallway, close the first door, open the second door, you're in. You're going to have all the produce there, the honey, the eggs, my beef, my pork, my chicken, other local producers products. Grab everything off the shelf that you want. As you put it into your basket, you're going to be taking photos of the barcodes on an app on your phone, much like what Bunnings Trade Pass uses now. Hit pay, pay for the food, and leave. I've got three video cameras uh, with microphones and speakers in the front room, and there's all sorts of surveillance hacks you can do. You can have a surveillance company that every time somebody walks in, they have a quick glance. And if needed to, they can actually communicate to the customers in the store. Oi, what are you doing? What's going on? Do you need any help? Like the the for a fee, for a set fee per week, this is so much cheaper than staffing. And it's also a lot more accessible. And it means that my 20% margin, um, you know, if I'm going to be doing 100 grand sales the first year, which is piddly sales, it's a really small amount of sales. But there, will act there might actually be something in that twenty thousand um, dollar margin at the end of it. Whereas if we did hundred grand sales, we're staffing the whole time, eighty grand wages. We're in the red, big time. So it's going to be fully self-service. It's a little bit of a honesty system, but there is uh, there is safety and surveillance protocols in there, along with the couple the the coupled feature of the approved access, the the customer application. I think it's uh, fairly innovative. I think everyone that I've explained it to has been excited to come on board. And we're hoping to have that rolled out in approximately seven or eight weeks. So watch this space if you're local. We'd love to have you along as a uh, customer at the Walkie Butchery soon. It's gonna be a pretty interesting experience for you, but I really believe um, this is one way that we were able to make this objective um, profitable. It's also one way that's going to be scalable. I could open up four or five of these pretty quickly. Like the fit out's not that expensive. The fit out is cheaper than the annual salary of one person, which I'm not going to have to pay. So I could roll if if the if we had our production ramping and four or five other partner businesses selling lamb and pork and beef alongside ours and sharing our values. I could roll four or five out of these out in six, 12, 18 months. No problems, especially once we've got the uh, fit out of the first one sorted. So uh, excited to have this model to roll out regenerative produce to people who want it and make it more accessible. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.